after me, validating the call to servant leadership. Thanks be to God for this Lenten season, this 40-day journey that each day draws us closer to the cross of Christ. For the hymn written by Fanny Crosby says, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. But it became obvious to Fanny Crosby that she still wasn't close enough. We talked a few days ago about the magnetism of the cross of Christ, and if you have prayed, Jesus, keep me near the cross, and then the Holy Spirit responds by saying near the cross is not close enough. So Fanny Crosby stirred up the yes Lord in her spirit and in the refrain got closer and said in the cross. In the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. It's one thing to be near but it's a totally different dynamic to be in. The Bible does not say if anyone be near Christ, he's a new creature. Oh, near won't get it. But if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. The Bible teaches us God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not near Christ, but in him. For to be in him signifies, according to Romans chapter 6, that you have been baptized into Jesus Christ. And not only baptized into Jesus Christ, but baptized into his death. Remember that the subject of baptism comes up in this dialogue that Jesus has with his disciples in Matthew 20. But as it arises, there is no discussion of water whatsoever. How can there be baptism? but there's no water. Well, let's understand that the message that Jesus wants us to realize as he validates us for servant leadership, that the baptism that he seeks for us to experience is not simply water baptism. Water baptism is a symbolic outward testimony and initiation but remember that the Bible talks at length about other baptisms beside water. As Romans 6 says, you are baptized into Jesus Christ, which means Jesus is big enough and deep enough and wide enough for you to literally be submerged into him. And not only baptized into Jesus Christ, but the Bible says baptized into his death, which is to say that we must be willing not only to suffer with Christ, but to die with him. For Colossians chapter 3 reminds us, if you are risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. But how can you be risen with Christ and you never went down with Christ? 
How can you rise with Jesus and you never died with him? In order to rise with Christ, you've got to go through the process of his sufferings, even his death. That's the message that Jesus communicates to his disciples as he draws them aside. Every now and then, God needs to get you all to himself. They were already involved in the hustle and bustle of life. They're interacting with many other individuals pressed upon by the crowd. But the Bible says Jesus pulled the 12 aside. There are some things I need to say directly, personally to you because everybody can't stand what I have to say. And since everybody can't handle it, this message is not for the masses. This message is not for the 5,000 that after we ministered to them, we fed with two small fish and five barley loaves. This message is for my inner circle. Because I need to let you know what's getting ready to happen. I'm about to be validated. And my validation will come in the form of being betrayed by one of you. Betraying isn't going to hinder me, it's going to validate me. I'm going to be denied by one of you that you never met me before in your life. That's not going to stop me. It's not going to discourage me. It's going to validate me. The prophecy has already gone forth. The word of God has already spoken on these matters. To this end was I born, for this cause came I into the world to bear witness of the truth. You can do nothing against the truth, the Bible says whatever you do is only going to work for the truth even if you fight against the truth God will turn it around and make it work for the truth Paul said to the church at Philippi I had some opposition I had some people that fought against me but it has fallen out to the furtherance of the gospel even the people that tried to destroy me didn't even know that they ended up helping me. That is why the word says we know. We don't have to wonder about it. We know that all things work together for good. But it's only to a certain kind of person. To them that love God and to them who are the call according to his purpose. If you've really been called, then God will validate your calling. This is what Jesus is saying to the disciples as he pulls them apart. Yes, I was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Yes, I was born of a virgin. Yes, God has spoken from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But that was not my validation. A witness, yes, but not my validation. Yes, I was baptized in water by John the Baptist, and immediately after having been baptized in water, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit as the Holy Ghost lit upon me in the bodily form of a dove. For John the Baptist says of him in John chapter 3, he has the Holy Ghost without measure which means that he is so filled with the Spirit that he can say to us, if you just believe on me, as the Scripture has said, I'll let a similar thing happen to you, for out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, Jesus, if your birth conceived by the Holy Spirit of a virgin didn't validate you if baptism in the Jordan and baptism in the Holy Spirit didn't validate you if the voice of your father from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased if that didn't validate you what is your stamp 
of validation. Jesus says, let me show it to you. I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be denied. I'm going to be delivered into the hands of Gentiles. I'm going to be condemned as a common criminal. And then I'm going to be mocked and scourged. That torture instrument, that thing that is a wooden handle with 13 leather straps with pieces of metal sharpened like razors that eat my flesh. That's what Psalm 27 says. The enemy comes to eat up my flesh. And just as soon as I'm scourged, that's not going to destroy me because no one can take my life. When I get ready, I'm going to lay it down. I'm not going to drop the mic. I'm not going to throw it down. But when I get ready, I'm going to lay down my life. And when the time is right, after three days, what I laid down, I'm going to take it up again in resurrection power. That's my validation. No, no, being baptized in the Jordan by John didn't validate me. Other folk had that. Hearing the Father's voice speak to me from heaven didn't validate me. God spoke from heaven even to Moses. No, no, even the fact that I have gone through the troubles, the trials, the test, the persecution that the Messiah must endure, my validation is something that can happen to no other person but me. I'm going down into the grave. I'm going down into hell. But after three days, I I'm rising again, being validated with resurrection power. Death can't hold me. The grave can't imprison me. Hell can't destroy me because while I'm going through that, I'm being validated. I want you to recognize that God will call you, but it's not enough to be called. Don't you remember reading in Ephesians 4 that the record is you must validate your calling? Or in the King James Version, you must make your calling and election sure. It's not enough to go around telling folk, look, I... I got papers, I've, I've got positions, I've got titles. No title validates you, no position validates you. It's the power of God in your life that validates you. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Why don't you look at somebody and ask them, you've been validated? No, I didn't ask if you've been vaccinated. I know being vaccinated is right. You need to be vaccinated and boosted. Some of us haven't even done that yet. But you don't have to say, man, just say, hmm. In the midst of a pandemic, God has kept us. He's had mercy upon us. And even when the pandemic got so close to us that it took our loved ones even when we couldn't have a proper funeral when we couldn't grieve properly wounds are still open and flowing because we haven't forgotten what God has brought us through but that didn't destroy us it only validated us Yes, we were criticized and called fools and ignorant, but don't you know your criticism only served to validate us? Even those songs says, talk about me as much as you please, but the more you talk, I'm going to stay on my knees. Your criticism validates me. Even if you are a hater, that validates me. For Jesus said, you shall be hated. If you live for God, everybody not going to like you. 
Stop going around expecting everybody to be your friend. I've said to you on a number of occasions, if you find one friend in your whole life, you are above average. One, one friend. And you know, I've, I've done more than my share of funerals, and it always amazes me when I read an obituary and it says that this individual had a host of friends. And so I don't know when I'm gonna check out, but please don't put that lie in my obituary. If you find one friend in life, you are above average. For the hymn also written by Fanny Crosby says, what a friend we, it wasn't just her. She didn't say what a friend I have in Jesus. She said what a friend we had because she knew you didn't have a lot of them either. Sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. How many friends you got that will die for you? How many friends you got that will go to hell for you? How many friends you got that arise from the dead for you? Stand up, let me look at you if you got friends like that. I have one friend who loved me enough to leave the right hand of the throne of God and take my place on the cross of Calvary. I have one friend who says Felton is guilty because he was born in sin and shapen in iniquity, but I'm going to take his place and drop the charges so that he can be set free. I have one friend. And his name is Jesus. Anybody got a friend called Jesus? Come on, help me give Jesus some praise. Thank God for Jesus. Yes, every ministry must be validated. And the fact of the matter is, validation does not come in the form of popularity. Validation does not come when someone pats you on the back and tells you how wonderful you are. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but I just don't want you to need to buy two or three extra hats because your head got bigger than what it was before. Your validation comes when God puts you to the test and delivers you through it. When God suffers that you be in the fire, but the fire can't destroy you. God gives you power to stand and then stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith that quenches the fiery darts of the wicked. Validation can only come from God and that's why the Bible says promotion doesn't come from the north or the south. Promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. Promotion comes from God. Validation, the stamp of approval comes from God. Come on, help me give God some praise today. <laughs> Who was it that God validated when the children of Israel were enslaved in Egypt. Pharaoh was the one who lived in the palace. Pharaoh was the one who rolled in gilded chariots. Pharaoh is the one who had the best food, the best physicians, the best of education, but God didn't validate Pharaoh. God validated Moses. Who was it that God validated even when a decree had been given by the king and those who gave him advice that you need to throw Daniel into a den of lions? 
God did not validate the crowd around the king seeking his popularity, nor the king himself, but God validated Daniel even when he was surrounded by ravenous beasts. God did not validate the king that threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into a fiery furnace, this furnace being heated seven times hotter than usual, killing even the men that threw them in the furnace. No, God validated the three Hebrews and brought them out of the furnace. Who was it that God validated? Was it Bull Connor? Was it those who turned fire hoses on the marchers in Birmingham? Those who bombed churches? No, God validated Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King. Who was it that God validated in the Democratic Convention of 1964 when blacks from Mississippi were not seated at the convention? Was it Lyndon Johnson that was validated? Was it the Democratic Party? No, it was Fannie Lou Hamer that was validated. She's the one that emerged with a testimony. Validation does not come just because you hold the highest position or office. Validation comes because you seek to fulfill God's purpose in your life. Yes, God will validate you. And when God validates you, he does so in spite of the opposition of others. Sometimes God validates you at a time of inconvenience. For you see, you would think that God would validate you when you're on the mountain or when things are going well. But look at God said, no, I've got a time and a place where I'm going to give you my stamp of approval. For Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd and I'm not going to lack for anything. He keeps on validating me because God keeps on restoring my soul. He validates Dates me when he makes me lie down in green pastures. He validates me when he makes me drink from still waters. You see, the nose of a sheep is so positioned that he cannot drink from running water. For if he inhaled while he was drinking from running water, he would inhale the water and suffocate. But in order for a sheep to quench its thirst, God has to bring a calm and peace all around the sheep. And when God puts everything at ease, then he makes the sheep drink from still waters. Because I am validated, then I realize I might not be in the best position, might not be wearing the finest clothes, might not be living in the finest home. But God says, look at here, I want to validate you while you're going through the valley of the shadow of death. Other people can have the mountain, but I'm not going to make you wait till you get to the mountain while you are going through the valley. I'm going to stamp you with my approval. No wonder David hollered when God said that. Here I am in the valley. Here I am surrounded by trouble. Here I am with enemies in my face. But God says now. Oh, you are validated. And when God stamped him with his approval while he was still in the valley, David had to holler, Yay! Oh, yay! Though I walk through the valley of 
the shadow of death. I am validated. I fear no evil because I am validated. If I hadn't been validated, I'd be afraid of death in my face. If I'd never been validated, I'd be afraid of threats to my life. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh if I'd never been stamped with God's approval. I'd be intimidated when giants rose against me. But right here in the valley, right here with tears in my eyes, oh, oh, right here, burdens are heavy, storms are raging, winds are howling, but God said right here, I'm going to validate you. Yeah! Oh, yes! David knew what he was talking about because Samuel came to Jesse's house and Samuel said, I couldn't tell nobody I was coming to your house because I've been sent here on a secret mission. God sent me to anoint a king. If Saul knew I was here, he'd have my head. I had to slip away to get to Jesse's house. Jesse, there's a king in this house. Jesse said, I know you must be talking about my oldest son. But Samuel said, he's not the one. Well, you must be talking about my second oldest. And Samuel took the all. This man looks good. This man is a soldier in the army. But for some reason, the all won't flow from the horn. I wanted to anoint him. I was impressed by his appearance. But God wouldn't validate him. God doesn't look on the outward appearance. God looks at your heart. God reads your motives. God reads your intent. Oh, yes. After he's seen all Jesse's son. Are you sure these are all your son? Just as I know you ain't talking about David. You don't want David. He's not king material. David is a servant leader. David leads the sheep. David fights with lions to save lambs. David fights with bears to deliver the ewe lambs. You don't want David. He's not a soldier. He's not tall. He's not handsome. But Samuel said, God sent me to this house. God said, there's a king in this house. Go get him. Go get him. Sometime your own daddy won't even validate you. Sometime your own mama won't even validate you. Oh, sometime your sister and brother won't even stamp you with approval. But God said, that's all right. Why you're down, why you're rejected, why you're hated, why you're persecuted. I'll stamp you with my approval. Anoint him. He's the one I call. Anoint him. He might stumble sometime. Anoint him. He might make some mistakes. Anoint him. I'm with him. Anoint him. I'll establish his throne. Anoint him. Say it. Oh, yes. Jesus is the stone 
Him. The builders rejected Jesus was headed by his own brothers. Jesus came to his own. His own received him not. We don't want you. We don't like you. We won't follow you. But God said, I validated him. I sealed him. I anointed him. I'll keep him. I'll preserve him. I'll raise him up from the dead. Oh, Lord, when you know you're validated, you keep on pressing your way. When you know you're validated, God will let you smile when you feel like crying. Look at Jesus saying, go ahead, nail my hands. Go ahead, nail my feet. Go ahead, crown me with thorns. Go ahead, spear me in the side. Go ahead, crucify me. Go Go ahead, bury me, seal me, but I've been validated. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I've been stamped with God's approval. Oh, I know. He brought me all the way. I know. He spoke to my soul. I know. He washed me in his blood. I know. He died for me. Oh, oh I know. He suffered for me, bled for me, buried for me, went to hell for me. I know. He woke me up this morning. I know. He started me on my way. I know. He's my bread when I'm hungry. Oh, oh I know. He rocks me when I get weary. I've been validated. Before the pandemic, I can't do it today, but before the pandemic, I would have had you to high five somebody, but since you can't high five nobody, just wave at them and tell them, I know I've been validated. I know I've been sealed by the Spirit. I know God is in me. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me. I feel his mercy. I feel his love. I feel his strength. I feel his power. Say yes. Say yes. You got to know for yourself when God is with you. You got to know for yourself that God loves you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Come on, help me give him some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish I had time to preach. Glory. I wish I had time to preach. Don't judge me by the clothes I wear. Don't judge me by the amount of money I make. I'm not validated by money. I'm not validated by things. Not validated by persons, associates. But the blood, the blood of Jesus has validated me. The blood of Jesus has washed me. The blood of Jesus has healed my soul. The blood of Jesus has cleansed my conscience. The blood of Jesus has cast the devil out. Say yes. I wish I had time. I wish I had time to preach this message. But God has 
has validated me. God has picked me up, turned me around, set my feet on solid ground. I have been validated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know y'all don't shout back here, but I thank God. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a righteous God. He's a loving God. Say yes. Say yes. God has validated my life. Why don't you look at somebody again and tell them, I know I've been validated. Hallelujah. I know what God has done for me. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You can't tell it like I can tell it what the Lord has done for me. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Come on, put those hands together and give him some glory. Hallelujah. 